الصلاة خير من النوم. Assalamu alaikum everybody. An American boxer and three-time world heavyweight champion once said, I am the greatest. I said that even before I knew I was. On today's episode, we're going to learn how to be the greatest. I'm your host, Muhammad Hassan, and you're watching ATF Channel. I done wrestled with an alligator. That's right. I have wrestled with an alligator. I done tussled with a whale. I done handcuffed lightning, throw thunder in jail. That's bad. Only last week, I murdered a rock, injured a stone, hospitalized a brick. I'm so mean, I make medicine sick. I want to know how to be really good at something. No, I want to learn how to be the greatest. I know that if I want to be a boxer, I have to learn how to subdue alligators and incarcerate lightning, but that's very specific to that particular field. But I'm sure there's some general rules on the way to greatness that can apply as much to boxing as to uh, writing, public speaking, anything. Now, when it comes to the topic of human nature, understanding ourselves, no one knows us better than the one who created us. It's funny how often we'd read some groundbreaking psychology or self-help book and then find out these new principles that are so amazing, but we've already been taught them. Allah and His Messenger taught us how to be the greatest by teaching us how to be the greatest Muslims. Rule number one, fix your intention. The first step to becoming a great Muslim is taking the shahada wholeheartedly. Before prayer, before zakah, before hajj, even before giving up pork, Rasulullah used to ask the new Muslims to take the shahada. This step is so important that their whole faith hinges on correcting their intention. At this step, it's important to be honest with ourselves. We don't always want what we say we want. And doing something because other people are doing it, it will not achieve greatness. Take the example of Ben Franklin. Ben Franklin, as a young man, he wrote down a list of 12 things that he wanted to improve in his personality throughout his lifetime. Everything from moderation to cleanliness. And then a friend of his, finding him a bit too cocky, told him to add humility to that list. So he did. But he, apparently he didn't internalize that goal. Because later on in his life, in his autobiography, he wrote that in the first 12 categories, he had a lot of success in it. But he couldn't claim any success in humility. So in the end, this wasn't his goal, this was his friend's. Ben Franklin will go down in history as a man of many things, but not as a man of humility. Being the greatest begins with being honest with yourself. Rule number two, always learn and practice. Upon taking the Shahada, the Sahaba were not instantly masters of the religion. They basically had to start from scratch. And their development wasn't equal. Those who spent more time with the Prophet ﷺ got more practice, learned more, and were better Sahaba. During one of the battles, the Prophet ﷺ trusted the banner of the Muslims to Zayd ibn Haritha, a freed slave. If it was to be slain, the banner would go to another Sahaba named Jafar ibn Abi Talib, who was a noble as well as a relative of the Prophet ﷺ. Now, at first, Jafar wasn't too pleased to be the backup banner holder for a freed slave, until the Prophet ﷺ reminded him that his unfounded sense of superiority was something from pre-Islamic ignorance, jahiliyyah. Now it's kind of strange for such a great Sahabi like Jafar ibn Abi Talib to say such a thing. He's a great Sahaba. Well, you have to realize that when they went to Abyssinia, those Muslims, they missed out on many years of personal development that the Sahaba that stayed with the Prophet ﷺ went through. Those are years of practice and learning that they didn't go through, and that's what they had to catch up on. Jafar ibn Abi Talib is undoubtedly one of the greatest, but his story teaches us that it takes time and effort to reach greatness. Greatness comes with knowledge and practice. Rule number three. Find those that share your interests. Don't think you could do it on your own. The Sahaba didn't. Rasulullah built a community around the masjid. This is where the Muslims would come and learn greatness together. To be righteous, we're advised to associate with righteous people. And this principle is, is, is general for anything. A focus group is always better than the sum of its parts. Why do you think organizations and clubs exist? When you're in a club or organization, you have access to experts that can guide you on your way. You have access to people who are just like you, who are seeking greatness. You're able to pick up good habits. You're able to turn your personal endeavor into a social event. And the most important thing is that when you're within this gathering, when you're within this group, what you're doing is normal. It's okay, because everyone around you is doing the same thing, seeking greatness. Great people stick together. Rule number four, set up reminders and encouragements. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put no shortage of encouragements and reminders in His religion. Prayer and supplication, they're scheduled reminders. Dhikr is literally remembrance of Allah. And the descriptions of paradise and the rewards for specific deeds, there's an abundance of those in the religion. Encouragements and reminders make the difference between being excited about something new and actual commitment. And this rule is just a little bit of organization with some knowledge from rule number two and some companionship from rule number three. 
Reminders and encouragements keep you on the path to greatness. Let's recap. Greatness begins with being honest with yourself. Greatness is practice and knowledge. Great people stick together and reminders and encouragements keep you on the path to greatness. This entire process is natural and helps us understand things, gain new skills, change patterns of behavior. And even though these rules seem very simple and intuitive, keeping them in mind and practicing them is very difficult. Rasulullah Sallam understood these rules and with the help of Allah, built the greatest Muslims in the entire world. Shouldn't we use these to improve everything about us? This is what Sheikh Kamal and I are trying to do with this channel. We want to use these principles and become better than we are. And inshallah, we want to do it with you guys. So please subscribe to this channel. Leave a comment below and tell me exactly what you want to improve. And inshallah, next week, we'll answer some of your questions and in the future, get into topics that you guys like. Thank you very much. My name is Muhammad Hassan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahu Rahim, Allahu Yuhibbu Al-Muhsinin Wa Khaliquna, Wa Raziquna Wa Huwa Ala Kulli Shayin Qadir Allah is Ghafoor, Allah is Rahim Allah is the one who loves the Muhsinin he is our creator, he is our sustainer.